morning my darlings welcome to a new vlog i've just been having a real fun time trying some new makeup products i have got the new days in bloom collection from kiko and i feel like kiko is such an underrated brand everything that i have tried from them lately i just absolutely love something that i keep in my handbag and here in my drawer is their radiant fusion baked powder this just gives you a little bit of coverage but also mattifying without getting rid of the glow from your skin um, and honestly I reach for this so so often even in the middle of the day you know certain areas just need a little bit more coverage a little bit of a top up but also a mattification obsessed with this and um, yeah I just had a lovely delivery of their new collection so I've tried that out I, I literally used every everything so this is their new face and body stick highlight which has given such a glow to my skin I popped it on my cheekbones um, I think this is actually an eyeliner pencil I used it on my eyebrows I'm not really an eyeliner girly and it was a little bit dark but really cool it's actually got three different sections you've got a light section up there you know some people do like the inner inner eye inner what's it called waterline this is the shade that I used on my brows I've got the trio eye pencil in 03 so I'm guessing 02 and 01 might be a bit lighter which may work for me a bit better and then there's black on the other side so if you just can't decide what color eyeliner you want for the day You've got everything here. The packaging is like a pearly pink with flowers on it, which is, I'm just, it's been a while since a makeup collection got me really excited. Um, I feel like a, a kid in a candy store. And then, piece de resistance, this adorable little eyeshadow palette. I find Kiko products really nicely priced as well. Makeup has got so expensive. Um, and this is just such a lovely little, not a quadra quadrant. What is the word quadrant but for nine? A nindrant <laughs> of colours. I would use the dark one maybe with a really slim brush just to do a little bit of shadow on the lash line and then all the other colours. I love a pink eyeshadow look. And then this light colour I've just popped under the brow. Um, and then this evening I'm actually going out for dinner with a friend so I will pop on probably a little bit of one of these sparkly colours. Is that everything? Oh no, that wasn't everything. There's a luminous cushion blush, which I think is really, really gorgeous. Reminiscent a bit of the Charlotte Tilbury. Um, and then I used, this isn't from the new collection, but this is something that I've had. I got this at Christmas. Also Kiko. This is the Hydra Shiny Lip Stilo in the shade 16. And it's balmy and glorious and lovely. So yes, big fan of the new Kiko Days in Bloom collection. Really, really lovely. This is what the packaging looks like. I went into the store yesterday on Regent Street to have a little look and there's even more in the collection that I've got on my wish list. So what is the plan for today? As I mentioned, going out for dinner later, I think we're gonna go to the Fox at Onnington. It's a halfway point um, for us to meet. And today, I think I've got an And Other Stories delivery arriving any minute now. So I might do a little try on view. It's been a while since I did a kind of like high street store try on. And I think I chose some really wonderful, uh, versatile bits, so. That'll be lovely. Did a workout with Lauren this morning and then had my usual avocado toast. Nothing new there. Lauren was quite kind to me this morning. I said I was feeling quite um, like muscle fatigue -y. So we didn't do anything too wild, um, but we did some really different movements that were like intense glutes and arms. So I'm gonna be achy tomorrow, which is fine. I like to feel the effects of a workout. But then also tomorrow, um, which will be in this vlog, I've got a little morning at Soho Farmhouse because you may have spotted that they, um, I mean, I don't know, you may not have done <laughs> No one else's world revolves around Dalesford and Soho Farmhouse like mine does, and it's quite tragic, and I'm really aware of that. But um, they've, <laughs> they've launched a new wellness barn, and they have got ice baths, they've got, I think, a cryo chamber, maybe an LED sauna, I think, we'll find out tomorrow. But most excitingly, they have got a Reformer Pilates studio, which is um, magical news. I know that Alex, whose classes 
I've spoken about many a time here on the channel. I do have Friday morning class, the cardio reform of Pilates, for those of you that are very in tuned <laughs> to what I'm doing workout wise. And Alex, she's the one that calls them the Michael Bublé's and wells a trouser. So if you want to experience an amazing class from Alex and you've got Soho membership, then you can now do her reformer classes at Farmhouse. So that's really exciting. I think she's going to be doing Thursdays and maybe Saturdays as well. So I'll ask her tomorrow. But because it's a soft launch, I'll be able to film, yay! So I'll actually be able to show you around. And yeah, it's gonna be a really, really good class. So that's happening tomorrow. What else is in the diary for today and tomorrow? A few work calls, bits and bobs. But today, so it is a little bit sad and rainy, but I really wanted to get the house and my life <laughs> ready for spring. I think we've gone, um, we've gone in with a fairly springy makeup look, quite glowy pink on the eyelids and pink on the lips, which is lovely. And um, I wanna do a little bit of a spring clean. I want to kind of replan my florals in the house. I've noticed that a lot of the trees, a lot of the bushes are starting to come into bloom. So I want to bring in some just subtle, I don't like to go too whole hog too early on, but I'm ready to get some signs of spring in the house. So we'll do that today as well. But for now, um, I've got an Ocado order coming any second, so we'll go and pop that away. And then, um, yeah, let's start with a nice spring clean. I'm back here straight away because um, I thought, seeing as I've just been chatting a little bit about makeup, I would just quickly unbox my goodie bag from the Beauty Pie Sam Chapman event that I was at last night. It was a really lovely evening. I didn't film very much in the last end of the last vlog, literally maybe like, a brief second of Marcia um, her speech. Marcia is the founder of Beauty Pie and um, yeah so I thought we could have a little look at the collection together. This will be my first time opening it and unboxing as well. I've been really loving these little Monica Vinade earrings so much lately. They are the ones with a little tortoise shell. They remind me of a, is it called a cardamom bun? Those little pastries? Yeah they remind me of those and I love them. So there we go. Uh, okay, right, beauty pie goodie bag. Also, I'm just obsessed with how big this bag is itself. It's so useful. I've got another one and I use it all the time. So, this is really exciting. Sam Chapman is like one of the OGs in the world of YouTube and um, I couldn't think of a better person to do a collection with beauty pie. She's just such, she's, an authority when it comes to makeup. She literally taught me how to do eyebrows. I think I mentioned that in the vlog last night. Um, I'm saying last night because to me it was last night. It would have been Sunday's vlog. Um, yeah, I was actually saying to Marcia that it was Sam that taught me how to do eyebrows. But yes, here we go. Oh my gosh. So we've got this big kind of um, newspaper, which I'm sure has got all of the press information. All of the info, my gosh, it's ginormous. That lip gloss looks sensational. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, I'm too excited. Wonder Color Soft Matte Liquid Lipstick, Sam Chapman X Beauty Pie. They were saying they've been working on this for well over a year. Oh my goodness, look at that. Could have done with this for Valentine's Day. So it's a soft matte liquid lipstick. Ooh, I can't put it on now because it will not go with my pink vibe, but that is rather fabulous for a date night. So soft matte wonder lipstick, sheen machine eye paint. Love the sound of this. Ooh, is that a black eye paint? Like that seems a little bit peculiar. Okay, that's, I'm very confused. Oh, maybe it's gray, maybe it's gray. Do you know what? I just don't think I can pull off a gray eye paint. So that is one that um, I will gift probably to Scarlett because she's a lot more creative with makeup and can do things with products that I just wouldn't even dream of even attempting. Hopefully this might be a neutral, yay. Okay, so this is a bronze color. Look at this. It seems to have a really nice kind of metallic finish to it. I feel like you could use this as a bronzer as well. That is a really, really gorgeous consistency. Again, 
<laughs> I should have opened this first and then I could have used both sets of makeup, but I think that that will blend out really beautifully. I think the brown, for me, is gonna be a lot more versatile. So this is the Wonder Color Soft Shadow Eye Crayon, and, ooh, look at that. That is a very chunky eye crayon. I think for a soft liner look, that would be absolutely gorgeous. Again, in the brown shade. If and when I do do eyeliner, I'm very much a brown eyeliner kind of gal. Do you know what, should we try it? That would be wild, wouldn't it? Trying out eyeliner on a Wednesday morning. I will try in a second. Um, and then the blushy cheek and lip tint in a ginormous, tube look at that oh my gosh that is more of a bronze i would say so that's probably really good for like creating a little bit of highlight contour Ooh, contour stick that's a really nice color for a contour Ooh, i feel like while i'm in mourning for the beauty pie dupe of the chanel bronzer this could do the trick in fact it's literally so similar but it's roll up which actually makes it even easier to apply that is such a nice color if you're a bit um if you don't want to apply it straight on then you could do it like that oh i love this see the warmth that that's just bringing to my complexion and because it's balmy it kind of blends in with the rest of my makeup really really nicely Oh, I just love having a little play around. Okay, that is officially going into the little box that I've got here for the things that I use every day. I really like how easy that is to apply. That's blended so nicely. Oh, I'm kind of nervous about eye crayons. Ah! <laughs> Maybe I'll try it tonight when I'm going out for the evening because I don't want to look like I've got a black eye all day if I get it wrong, which I probably will do because we all know that, ironically, for someone that does share beauty online, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not really very good at it. I'm all about sharing the stuff that everyone can do. Zero talent required. If you want beauty tips, follow Sam Chapman um, and I'm sure she will share lots of information on how to use these, but looking forward to giving this a go. And I saw from the marketing imagery and on the like bar area last night, they've got the, the satin lip in some really beautiful pinky shades as well. So I will be adding those to my next beauty pie order. And as a reminder, if you're not yet a member, my discount code, I think it now, Josie sent me is the code. I believe that will now get you two months um, free trial of the membership. I think that's the current deal. So I'll leave the info for that on the screen. Guys, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I had my nails done yesterday um, and I was just opening a cupboard to put something away. And I've just, given myself such a mega broken nail i don't know if you can even see is it gonna focus look it's broken all the way across there and all my nails were such a nice shape and length and now i'm gonna have to bring this one all the way like down to here oh i wish there was like maybe this exists like a steri strip you know, and you really deeply cut yourself. I wish there was like a steri strip for nails. Does that exist? Can I put a bandage on it? Because it's just gonna look so rubbish with one mega short nail. You know, and you just wish that you could rewind time by like five seconds. Oh. <laughs> it might be because I didn't get like a build gel or any kind of strengthening treatment on them yesterday either. Can't even see, but yeah, there we go. How annoying. <laughs> Look at my seed collection. So I've been ordering a lot of seeds lately. I know I don't need any more because I've got so many from last year, but it's just, it's an addiction and it's not an unhealthy one. So I'm just leaning into my, my really ridiculous love of growing things from seed. I did a little bit of organizing and these, this little wave down here, these are ones that I can actually start to grow now. So I can start doing, I've already started some different chards, um, I've got a few different tomatoes here, in fact, yeah, four different tomatoes, I'll pop the photos of them on the screen here, Brad's Atomic Grape, so this is a really lovely cherry tomato, and cherry sized tomatoes do grow really well for me, a Mango Lassie, I literally just bought this one because the name sounded amazing, and if it's as refreshing as a Mango Lassie, then it's going to be scrumptious, Pink Tiger, 
If this is actually going to be pink, that's going to be so fun. This one is called the Sun Fired Flare, a medium beefsteak tomato with almost black colors streaking down. So I think that the color will mean that this will be really, really tasty. A lovely bright chard, some carrots and spring onions, which, and beetroot. All of these, so carrots, spring onions, beetroot, they, you know, they obviously grow in the soil. Well, spring onions half and half. And so I thought I would actually wait until my compost arrives. I've placed a really big order with Rocket Grow and we've got loads and loads of fruit and veg compost coming. Annoyingly, I don't think it's going to make it for the weekend, which is a shame because I think it's going to be sunny on Saturday. But once the beds have got their new compost on, then I will direct sow my carrots, my spring onions and my beetroot. What I will do maybe next weekend, because technically it says to sow from March. March all the way up to May. That's quite amazing. Oh, I love hearing the clock chime. So I've got a couple of different Mange 2 varieties. I think my nail is actually starting to bleed. How horrible is that? I can feel it like bleeding underneath. Ew! <laughs> Horrid! Um, so yeah, a couple of Mange 2s, which are really lovely because obviously you can eat the outer shell of the Mange 2. A couple of different types of peas because I love growing peas um, and I'll eat them as either little shoots or let them grow full size. And finally, three different types of kale because kale, you can sow it all the way as late as up to July and then you have kale all throughout the winter, which is wonderful. I'm still eating last year's kale now in the garden, which is fantastic. My tiny bunny, what have you done to the carpet? What have you done to the carpet, you funny little boy? Why is your ear always flopped over? I was having so much love with my babies this morning. I didn't want to leave the Arga because it was so nice and warm by there. And we just had such nice cuddles with your brother as well, didn't we? I was just, oh, ow. <laughs> I'm, you guys are going to be really annoyed with me about how much I'm going to complain about this nail today, but even just stroking him, I just pulled it back. I think I'm going to have to put a bandage on it. Oh, that's so tragic, isn't it? It's always like paper cuts and broken nails. You feel really tragic for complaining about them because you know that it's pathetic and it's like the smallest insignificance in the world. <laughs> are you enjoying that, Bun Bun? Um, but it's just a real pain, isn't it? It's a pain, because I can't stroke you to my full stroking potential. You've got very stinky breath, but actually, I really quite like it. It's very comforting, and I adore you. Right, I just wanted to show you, I just heard the microwave, or the microwave ding, because I've popped my coffee in there. Um, I had a million questions on Instagram, that is such an exaggeration, about my barber, by the way, last week, because I posted, for the first time ever, I posted like a, I hate using the word photo dump, so I'm going to say photo album, just of iPhone photos that Scarlett had took over the weekend, and lots of people were asking about my barber. It is obviously my mum's that I've stolen, and it's at least 30 years old, so probably they don't even make this, well, they definitely don't make them like this anymore, but for those of you that did want to try and find it, maybe on, like, the depths of antique shops, um, I mean, look how old, the label is literally yellow, it is the Beaufort, and I know that they do still make a Beaufort, but I don't think it'll be the same as this, they'll have redesigned it 10 million times, but, yeah, this is my ancient barber, and this is my germination station. So, as you may know, seeds need warmth. They don't need light so much. Ooh, I know, I'm coming. Seeds don't necessarily need light in order to germinate. They just need warmth. So that's why I have an indoor germination station. And um, the microgreens obviously stay in here because I'm eating them with my meals. And then... This was the tray that until this morning I had cling film over it because it needs that almost humidity. So we've got the row of seeds at the top, nothing has germinated there, from the pepper that I actually got from the farm shop. Ate the pepper and then sowed the seeds. The kalettes are doing really well, I'm so excited for these. Um, in fact, I think they're the only thing that's actually done anything yet. And then we've got two different types of aubergine, these two rows here. So. It's kind of annoying because the kaolette, obviously, it's already getting leggy, which means it's now reaching for the light, whereas nothing else has germinated. So I kind of need to pot on the kaolette, uh, which, is that what you call it, potting on? Um, I've forgotten all the gardening terminology when you, like, take out the seedling and you put it, yeah, potting on. 
And then here, a few tiny little signs of life. We've got a little leek starting to grow up from there. I think that's it. Nothing else has started in that tray. Nothing has started over here. So it's a slow week in the germination station, but patience is part of the joy and the learnings of gardening, isn't it? Just had a marketing email from Dalesford about seed sowing in... Oh gosh, <laughs> this is my kind of content, um, seed sowing at this time of year. Carol Bamford has posted an Instagram reel on seed sowing apparently. Let's have a little look. Oh, this is very wholesome. Ah, she uses Vital Seeds as well. That's literally the brand that I just bought. Okay, I need to watch that with sound, but I just love their marketing emails. Of course, in the reel, they're using Vital Seeds and then they're advertising the Dalesford ones here, of course. Oh, I love all of these bits. They've got the trugs. That's probably the most similar to the trug that I've got. Mine was from an antique shop. The lovely watering can, the gardening apron. Um... That is actually a really, really nice apron and they've got the Dales for Gardening tools. I do love the Dales for Gardening tools. They are very, very good. I do have a £10 off code for Dalesford online shop, by the way, so I'll leave that link down below in case you did want to treat yourself to anything. Look at that. That, to me, is just like goals, having all of these seeds. I might ask them if I can have a little look around their um, greenhouse. Jez, the gardener, we're quite pally with him, so I'm sure he'll show us around. Um, you don't need to see my inbox. <laughs> Okay, my and other stories order arrived and I thought I would actually just show it to you here in the pink room because quite honestly the lighting upstairs is so dreadful. Um, you can see the loo, that's not exciting is it? That's better. So actually, um, this jumper is the first thing that was in my order and the colour reminds me of Easter eggs. It makes me feel optimistic for spring and I've said a million times that I always feel that the the price versus the quality and the longevity and the um, timelessness of And Other Stories Knitwear I think is really, really wonderful. So this is like a, I'm gonna call it an Easter green. It's like a minty chocolate chip kind of color. Really fresh, really zingy. And I love it. I think it's a really nice cut. It's not got ribbed um, tight cuffs. So you've, you've got, I, I think that's quite like a modern, um, like quite a trendy sleeve style where they're quite open and baggy. So really, really like this. And it's a nice length as well. It's just covering, just about covering the top of the buttocks. So it's, um, it's quite flattering as well. So this was actually, you know, there's always one thing in your shopping order that's like the thing that makes you press go. Um, otherwise, you just fill up your basket and you're not that bothered. <laughs> you can take it or leave it. But this was the this was the um, straw that broke the camel's back. These were this is a, a repurchase. I have owned these before, but I lost one, <laughs> which is a sad tale for how many a pair of gloves fall into misuse or disuse, <laughs> I should say. But these are the and other stories white cashmere gloves. They are thirty five pounds, and honestly, who is that? Oh, it was the Ocado delivery driver, so that's all sorted and in the kitchen. This, I think, is accessories from and other stories. They send everything in a protective bag. Yay. Lots of plastic. I just don't really know what the solution is, obviously, when you buy in shops. Um, to be honest, having worked in retail, I know that they just take it out of the plastic before it goes on the shop floor, so there's still plastic at some point. It's just, yeah, it's just hard to avoid. And here is what was in that carrier bag and in those little bags. It's basically a load more hair clips, as you may realize. I like to just clip my hair up most days. It's probably my most easy go-to hairstyle and somehow it feels like I've made a little bit more effort than just whizzing my hair up in a bun which is to be honest my hairstyle preference but if I've got any kind of movement in my hair like a little flick like this then I'll just do it in a half up half down super duper easy and if you're like me and please let me know if you you do have this um intricacy or weird thing like I do I have just dropped a haircut I actually can't eat food with my hair down. <laughs> like this, oh my gosh. Hold the clip, woman. <laughs> I, yeah, 
having it half up half down is fine but if this section here was down I wouldn't be able to eat like so much so that I have been known to go into a kitchen and find string and create hair ties for myself rather than sit and eat a meal with my hair down which is I know it's really strange um, but again there are bigger <laughs> problems to have in life than not being able to eat with your hair down so I always have at least one hair clip clip within reaching distance the one that I'm wearing now um I think it's pink isn't it yeah I mean it's not the chicest in the world it's just whichever one I grabbed but I, pre I do prefer neutral coloured hair clips so we've got this one here which is almost like a tortoise shell tortoise 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 uh, they're a good price as well. You can get far more expensive hair clips from the likes of Anthropology and places like that. A brownie tortoise. This one I've already got, um, but I use it a lot, so grabbed another one of those. And then this one is pink, ready for spring. Look at these colours together. Doesn't that make you so excited for spring? Pink hair clip, but slightly more chic pink than this one. Um, and minty Easter egg. Jit, jit, jit. I just call it a jit, which is a jumper and a knit. My brain is not working and I don't know why because I've had two cups of coffee today. And then the last thing um, is a, a major wild card. It's a wool jacket but it's kind of like a blazer. I think I was um, on a bit of a high from my owl. I'm going to have to cut it. I'm, I'm, we're going to go to the bathroom together afterwards and we're going to cut it down. That's going to be fun. Um, yeah, on a bit of a high from my Holland Cooper blazer, I thought I would see how far I can push it. I'm already thinking this might not be the most me thing in the world. Maybe I should just stick with the Holland Cooper one. Um, this feels a little bit school uniformy. Hmm, I think a lot of people would find this really useful in their wardrobes. A, a grey, like, knitted blazer. I mean, this does, it looks nice. It's just not very me, is it? Can you see the length of it? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do one more. <laughs> and that is the length of it. So it's not particularly long, um, but it does cover the butt. So it's a nice layer for, to be honest, days like today when it's not freezing cold, um, but you definitely need something over the top of your jumper to get yourself to where you need to go. It's smart, it would be a fantastic work piece. Um, I just, I'm just not sure that it's that me, and padded shoulders and blazers always remind me of my school uniform, and personally I feel like if you've got your hair up, I feel like it's just too much shoulder, um, and I feel like a bit of a pea head, so I think maybe the, the jacket is not for me, because let's be honest, I just listed a hundred reasons why I don't think it suits me, but yeah, other than the coat, um, which, as I said, I think would be so wonderful for so many people, just not suitable for me. 100%, I read that as 100%, it clearly says 55%. Recycled wool, not cheap actually, £175. Um, it's from their Stockholm Atelier, made in Romania. Is this the wool brand that they, they bought or something? I think there's something special about this, but yeah, nice to try. Um, it's satisfied an inquiry <laughs> that my brain had about whether that would work for my wardrobe. Don't think it will, so never mind. Okay, um, let's go and sort out the Ocado order. Okay, a quick um, Ocado unpacking because my auntie and uncle have just got here, uh, which is a nice surprise. I mean, my mum knew that they were coming, but I just completely forgot. So I'm gonna head over to see them in a second um, and we're gonna have a cup of tea, which is nice. What's in my Cardo order? Basically all the stuff that I can't buy from farm shops. So we've got my oat milk, which we won't go into. I don't need to justify my love for oat milk to anybody. We'll move on. <laughs> um, I've got the Oatly Barista and I also ordered, they were actually on special offer, the Rude Health. Rude Health almond milk because this is what they make the matches from at Dalesford and they are delish. I've got some caster sugar, golden caster sugar, and this is my favourite brand of flour. Is it called, Do yeah, Dove's Farm. It's organic, and this is the self-raising wholemeal flour, which is really nice for baking with. I think I can actually get that from Dalesford, but probably cheaper on Ocado. And then I like these bags of organic berries. They are frozen berries, far cheaper 
obviously than buying them fresh. Um, and this afternoon I need to make up, because I didn't have these berries before now, I need to make up my smoothie jars for the week, which honestly, I don't know why I never did this sooner. It's just making my life so much easier to have a little jars ready to blend, ready to add kefir and some kind of milk. Um, and then you've got delicious smoothies. So yeah, that's definitely something that I will be probably doing forever now. Then I ordered, okay, this is my little guilty pleasure. I, I do have some weird things when it comes to eating. So like I have to have my hair up, you might remember I also have these like pairings that I have to have. So one of them, to be fair, I've not done it in a while because Ribena is obviously not very good for you, but um, normally Ribena and macaroni cheese is my dream pairing. I think it's the savouriness and like dodge of the mac and cheese contrasted with the sharp fruity sweetness of the Ribena. Look at me trying to be all Marco Pierre White with <laughs> mac and cheese and Ribena. But um, with basically any dish that includes gravy, I have to have a red currant jelly. Again, it's that savory mix with the sweet um, and jellies, they can be really, really full of crazy ingredients, but obviously the number one ingredients in any jam or jelly is sugar, but at least the rest of the ingredients within this one are pretty good. So that's the Dalesford red currant jelly. It's often sold out in the farm shop, which is why I got it on Ocado. And then Charlie put on the shopping list toasted sesame oil. I actually don't know what he uses this for, um, but any oil that adds nuttiness to the flavour of things, I'm okay with. And we got the Biona brand. I think everything that Biona does is organic. They're literally called Biona Organic, so one would hope so. Ground ginger, because again, it's included in a lot of things I like to bake, like banana breads or my lovely tasty little um, banana muffins. Ran out of that, so I need to replenish my ground ginger jar. So this I'm a little bit... Um, unsure of because I love the taste of the Biona rye breads. I really really like them and I like the kind of compactness of them especially with my sliced avocado but in my head I'm thinking how can something that has such a long shelf life and obviously it's wrapped in plastic how is this not an ultra processed food? It probably is but by the definition of ultra processed food being um, including ingredients that you don't have in your kitchen, it's not. Because the ingredients within this are literally whole grain rye, water, sourdough, and sea salt, and they're all certified organic ingredients. So how does this last so long in the fridge? Because it really does, and that's why I love to have it, because sometimes we run out of bread, you know, <laughs> we're only human, um, and you've always got this in your, in your fridge as a backup. So, because it doesn't go off, I, I just, I don't understand it, but I like it. Um, bananas because we can't get them in the farm shops around here because we don't have the climate for bananas. And then corn flour, which I think Charlie uses mostly in gravy and pizza making. Note that's semolina. So yeah, corn flour, exciting. So it's not really a big shop because we do get most things now from farm shops. I know Charlie obviously made the big statement about not going in a supermarket this year. He did go into an M&S petrol station, which a few of you guys picked up on when I was giving Dexter the head massage. You were like, Charlie's in M&S? What is he doing? To be fair, it was just a petrol station one, but technically still a supermarket. I think um, I was chatting to lovely Joe Good last night and she was saying that it's, um, it's just good to figure out if you do have alternatives and obviously money talks. So where you spend your money, you can, there's nothing, there's not much that we can do on a political level, like changing how the country works, but if we do choose to spend our money um, in farm shops rather than with big corporations, then, you know, maybe if one person does it doesn't make a big difference, but I'm aware that like 50, 60,000 people do watch these videos, so imagine if even a small fraction of us, if we changed our spending habits and we were able to support smaller local businesses, then actually that can have a big impact. Anyway, I'm rambling now, um, as I do when I get passionate about things. I'm gonna pop this away um, and then we'll head over. And I have got my homemade soup, so hopefully they're hungry. Okay, slight change of plan. Um, they're gonna come over here for lunch, which is great, so, I have luckily got that um, a huge amount of the broccoli and blue cheese soup that I made the day before yesterday. Um, and to be honest, it needs to get eaten today. So this is 
absolutely perfect. Um, because it's not just me, I will make it my bougie soup. So I'm gonna make some croutons. How are you guys doing at the bingo game? <laughs> I feel like we're taking them off today because here we are making soup. And I've spoken about seeds, so, and I've probably spoken about Dalesford, so I think you've ticked off three on the bingo cards today. So I'm not gonna talk through this. You guys have seen me make these croutons a million times before. They are delicious. The more salt, the better. Um, I thought I was taking this over to make at Mum's, so I've already got the ingredients out, but Italian seasoning, seeds to go on top of the soup, microgreens, <laughs> that should also go on the bingo card. Okay, let's get cracking. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights later now we had a lovely lunch all together crazy lighting because it is dark outside my jumper now looks gray it is the same lovely green one anyway i'm gonna do my smoothie jars now as i mentioned earlier only only six hours after i planned on doing them but that's fine as long as they get done you can see here the huge variety of ingredients that i put in my smoothies and as you might be able to guess it just takes so long in the mornings like pulling every individual thing out sometimes i forget things um sometimes i just can't be able to grab some things it takes too long so doing them en masse like this really is just such a great hack and i don't know why i didn't think to do this sooner so um i'll briefly run through what i'm going to put in the lesson that i learned last time was not to put your powders in the jars first because then they just get stuck at the bottom we're gonna have some sound effects from Dexter and Dickens who are gonna start playing with each other. These are the little jars that Charlie gets his yogurt in and they are the perfect size for a single portion of smoothie. So I'm gonna put the powders in last. First thing I'll do is about a third or a half of a banana in the bottom of the jar. Then I will add in a good handful of my frozen berries. I thought I used all of these up last time, but apparently not. These are the blackberries that we foraged from the hedgerows at the end of last summer. Yeah, I thought we'd used all of those up. Maybe maybe we had a second bag hidden away in the fridge. Little secret additional item to add is cauliflower. It has to be frozen cauliflower, um, otherwise it goes a bit weird. But cauliflower just makes your smoothies really creamy, which is lovely. And of course you get the health benefits. So. I've got regular white cauliflower and I've got, I keep calling it the wrong thing, is it romaine or romanesco? The spiky cauliflower that looks like that, if you can tell, because variety is great. So cauliflower, banana, you can't taste the cauliflower by the way, so, uh, frozen berries, then you get fun and funky. So I'm gonna be adding in a tablespoon of chia seeds excellent fiber a tablespoon of crunchy peanut butter or almond butter um, because it makes your smoothie taste delicious i'm adding in a spoon of grass-fed is it beef i don't know it's collagen um from a company called ossa i use this one i use the freya they did actually tell me how to pronounce it and I've forgotten, I think it's Fre Fre Freya, I think it's Freya. Um, yes, yeah, so you can use whatever collagen you like. I also like collagen from Ancient and Brave. Um, I don't have it down here, I'm using up that packet first, but I'm going to pop in Ancient and Brave's Electrolyte Hydration Powder. I don't know if electrolytes really work, um, but I've got this bottle, so the more hydration the better. For flavour and mega antioxidant, I'm adding in some of this, is it like blueberry, dried, powdered blueberry? We've used over 700 grams of fresh blueberries in this bag and nothing else. Nutrient-rich wild forest berries. 
for vitamin E, for high fiber, for magnesium, and for potassium. Wonderful. So you can just add in whatever like super powders that you want. If I had some here, I would add in ground flax, but actually I'm gonna put some flax seeds in and sunflower seeds just because I've got them. If I had maca powder, I would add some of that in as well. I don't have any at the moment, so next time. So I've grabbed some linseed, flaxseed, and I think these are sunflower seed. I'll also add in a few oh, almonds and also hazelnuts and Brazil nuts. The more variety, the better. And to be honest, um, it's a really good idea if you also blend up some nuts and just have them like chopped on the top of your smoothie because as I've already learnt in my nutrition course, eating solid things like a solid nut, for example, even if your smoothie is just a bit more chunky or your soup is a bit more chunky, this definitely helps because the act of chewing releases more saliva in our mouths which helps us to break things down which is so much better for digestion so if you do have little bits of whole nut or you know not completely blended nut in your smoothie then that's perfect so there we go okay i'm not going to chat through actually putting the bowls together you guys can enjoy a nice bit of relaxing music while i get them all assembled and then i'll show you a finished smoothie jar in a few moments time my mind i will keep on holding my head high even if the sky is falling down are my finished little smoothie jars. We've got five, which will see me through the rest of the week. They actually look as though they've still got a little bit of room in them. I'm hoping I didn't forget anything. Um, in addition to what I did last time, I added obviously the chia seeds because I forgot that last time and a few extra seeds. So every morning or whenever I want to have one, I will normally have this after my avocado toast, which is really nice as a little kind of sweet little palate cleanser. What I will do is I will add some kefir and to be honest, what I did last time was I filled the jar with cold water and then shook it up so that I got all of the powders and then added that water, powdery water, sounds a bit gross, but it was fine, into the smoothie and that was actually a really nice consistency. But if I wanted it to be more creamy, then I could use hazelnut milk or almond milk or something like that. But honestly, the water is absolutely fine and probably healthier. So there we go. They're gonna go in the freezer and it'll make my mornings a whole lot easier. Okay, darlings, I've just very quickly got changed. Um, I say I've got changed. I've actually got the exact same base layers on. I've got my thermal and my leggings on that I've been wearing all day. Judge me as you will. It's too cold to strip down to nothing. And then this is a lovely, um, okay, you literally can't see anything. It's a fitted brown high neck uh, jumper dress from Polo Ralph Lauren and then little Gucci cape which honestly I have not got enough wear out of considering how fabulous it is I've just not got enough wear out of it so I need to wear it more and I thought tonight would be perfect so I'm gonna drive to the Fox meeting Lizzie there and um, it's pizza night so I can't wait pretty much got the place to ourselves okay pizzas oh my gosh I think I'm gonna go for Diavolo pepperoni with your latte cheese and honey. Yum. Good morning, my darlings. Last night was lots of fun um, at the Fox at Oddington. I have never seen it so quiet there before. So if you want to have a fairly chilled evening, Wednesday night, pizza night, and the pizzas were delicious. So many nice bar snacks as well. I could have I could have eaten a lot, but I just got a pizza. But yeah, it's really nice. So this morning, first time trying Reforma Pilates at the farmhouse, Soho Farmhouse. And it's, um, it's a class with Alex, who you know I absolutely love. I actually don't even know how to get to the studio. It's apparently tucked away behind the spa. I think it's a whole new wellness barn. I have bought my swimming costume in case I can use the ice barrels afterwards, but I'm not sure. So we shall see. Anyway, class starts in um, just over 15 minutes. I've got time to find my way there and maybe grab a matcha because <laughs> I saw Molly Campsey post an Instagram story yesterday and it was like, 
I am the holy trinity of, I can't remember what she said, but matcha, pilates and vlogging and that is literally me. Let's make it a holy quadrangle with something to do with Soho House because yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of tragic isn't it? This is the uh, Cotswold edition of being a basic you know what. Anyway, let's get going. reformer pilates here at farmhouse it was a different um, reformer machine i think that was called the stotts pilates machine and um yeah it was different but it was so much fun with alex so i think she's going to be teaching on thursdays but it's going to be a mad dash fastest finger first to get a slot because um there's only eight reformers in there and it's going to be really popular so if you've got an overnight stay booked the second you know about your stay you need to book in your reformer or of course if you're local i'm sure you know the drill um, but yeah, this is the new wellness barn and it's just behind the lazy lake. So that's just there. I've still never done a lazy lake experience. So I might just go and have a little nosy. It's, um, it's cold, wet and rainy right now. So not like the ideal time to do it. But um, let's also just go and have a little look at the ice baths around the corner because that I think could be really good fun. So these little wooden pods on the lake, I think they're like individual hot tubs um, where you can go and have your lazy lake experience and then here oh rain gosh we have got some very modern very jazzy looking ice baths you do have to book these so unfortunately I can't just plunge myself in right now um, and then a nice warm hopefully shower for afterwards so there we go the next class are about to get started in this room here they have made it ultra beautiful i've got to say so her house always make everything so aesthetic okay my darlings back home again i've just done a couple of hours on my laptop i have sent off a big project um final amends hopefully often when you work with a brand you send over your content whether it's a youtube video or your stories or your reel um and then a brand will provide feedback and you'll need to make amends and sometimes you go through a couple of rounds of that so i'm hoping 
that this will be in the final round of amends for this particular project. But um, yeah, it's been a really good one to work on. You'll be seeing that very, very soon. As I mentioned, <laughs> it's rainy and cold today and I'm home alone. Normally all of those things combined would just lead to one thing, which is mac and cheese. But <laughs> I've also got loads of greenery, greenery, <laughs> um, green things in the fridge which need eating and I thought that I would actually um, make, a ma make a mac and greens is what I'm going to call it. Mac and greens, mac and cheese. I can hear the gravel on the drive so maybe Charlie's home so maybe he will join me for some of this. So I have got the essentials, obviously the parmesan, the cheddar, the butter, the milk, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to saute a leek. I've got some frozen peas, good old bird's eye. Um, I'm going to do half an onion, which I'm going to chop up and a little bit of garlic and olive oil, saute the leek, saute the frozen peas. Then I'm going to add in, I've got a trio of um, leafy greens here. I've got the kaolette, which is this really deep um, kale. It's almost got like purple hints to it. And yes, I have planted some kaolette seeds. So hopefully I'll be able to grow some of my own this summer. I'm going to add in some kaolette. I've also got some organic kale from Waitrose, which I didn't buy. So that means that Charlie has been into Waitrose, so he has been in a supermarket. Uh, again, it was probably the petrol station, but still. So we've got some classic kale, curly kale. Yes, there's a lot of plastic here, um, but sometimes it just can't be avoided. And also, when we get to summer, I will hopefully have all of this growing in the garden, so I won't need to go and buy plastic bags full of kale. And then this is Waitrose Organic Spinach. So I'm going to add a handful of each of those leafy greens into my pan, soften them down and then blend with whatever milk I can find, probably almond milk actually. Um, and I have been melting down my, this, look, this looks gross so I won't give you a close up, but this here is my, oh it smells good, mm, that smells so tasty, that in fact it needs to melt down a little bit more, that's my homemade veggie and beef bone broth cube so that's just going to add the most delicious flavor what pasta are you going to be using i hear you asking well seeing as this is a different recipe i'm going to use a different pasta this one looks like a little kind of sea slug <laughs> you know those little kind of aquamarine animals it's not focusing but it's basically got squiggly bits it's called malfal mafaldote Mafaldote lenta lavorazione essenziale tenute alla cottura. <laughs> my Italian followers are probably cringing beyond belief at my shocking accent, but Mafaldote looks delicious and the little squiggly bits on the edges are going to just hold on to so much sauce. So that's the plan. Never done it before, but um, yeah, let's try and make a healthy mac and cheese. Mac and greens. Right, let's do it. So stage one, we've got the onion, then the garlic, then the leek in here. And this is just gonna be a couple of minutes, lightly frying in some olive oil until everything goes a bit more translucent. And then I'll add my peas. I'll wait for them to defrost a little bit. Add in my kale, add the lid and cook that down for a few moments before we blend it with some cheese and some milk and my stock. Okay, frozen peas are going in. Yummy. And look at that, my trio of leafy greens. I'm just adding some salt and a touch more olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna let this cook down for five minutes with the lid on while I get started on my pasta. So it's about five or six minutes later and we're going to do the sauce. So first of all, taking my pan, of now very well sauteed greens and let's just let that cool down for a moment that's all going to be going in the thermomix alongside some blended parmesan i've got some leftover blue cheese here that i might as well throw in 
I'm going to use some milk, a little bit of the pasta cooking water, some pine nuts, and I might also toast a few pine nuts just to give the end dish a little bit of pizzazz and crunch. And then I'll also add in some salt and where is my pepper? Pepper. But first, let's strain that delicious malfadore dote pasta. delicious this is oh my goodness i've been trying to film it for a little youtube short as well so you can save that if you want to just quickly access this recipe which i could not any more highly recommend i do think a lot of it is down to the deliciousness of the homemade veggie stock i can really taste it in this so here we go i have topped it with some toasted pine nuts which literally take two seconds a little bit of basil probably should have put some in the sauce but never mind extra parmesan cheese and an extra scrunch of black pepper so oh my gosh it's delicious i've made quite a lot i might have it for my lunch tomorrow as well but yay healthy mac and triple greens there is so much goodness in this i can't wait to dig it <laughs> few hours later I have just been on my laptop <laughs> so very very boring to show you that on a vlog but um, I noticed I was getting a few questions this morning I was posting the Instagram uh, stories from the reformer at Soho farmhouse and for some reason it triggered off quite a lot of questions about the Cotswolds and like pub recommendations and walk recommendations so I just five minutes ago popped up an Instagram story literally with a question box a Q&A box so I thought I would give that a few minutes and answer a few Cotswold Q&A cues uh, I will a some cues um here in front of the fire which has suddenly jumped back to life hallelujah and also yes i'm st still in my knit from earlier i'm lazy i'm still wearing my pilates outfit and i don't care it's fine i wasn't stinky so we're all good also i can't be the only one that does this but i get so carried away buying really lovely like wholesome books and then I never read them or I flick through them and I'm like that looks lovely one day I'll make that and I never do so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to challenge myself and I did get into a nice habit I think at the beginning of the year of doing this and then for some reason I stopped of every day I'm going to pull down a book and I'm actually going to properly take the time to flick through it and do something from one of the books so for example I've got a book here called well-being recipes and rituals to realign the body and mind from Danielle Copperman uh, so that looks quite nice gonna have a little flick through that and then I've got Carla Oates what a great name for um, <laughs> a chef the beauty chef Delicious food for radiant skin, gut health, and well-being. She must be fuming <laughs> because she obviously wrote this book and mentioned gut health in the title a few years ago. In fact, when did this book come out? And I feel like no one really cared about gut health. Um, I think this is the brand and I've got the supplements. So she's probably not that livid because she's probably been, you know, living the gut health dream for the last few years. But I'm not sure when this book came out. But yeah, obviously the last few years everyone has been talking about gut health she must be like i've been saying this for so long and then i've got one of hugh richard's books here i think he's got a new one out this is veg in one bed how to grow an abundance of food in one raised bed month by month so 
This, this is quite useful. Obviously, I've got three raised beds that I can use, but, um, ah, yeah, it is. Okay, so it's done by month, month by month. So let's have a little look at what he's saying for March, for example. March at a glance, things that you can do on your windowsill, like peas for shoots, broad beans and cardboard tubes, harvest pea shoots, start off your radish seeds in your raised beds, you can start off your lettuce seeds. So I love that it's month by month. I will leave all of these books linked down below. And then it's basically like your checklist of what to do each month. Really, really useful. And then it goes into more detail about each of the things that he's told you to do. So there's more detail about growing pea shoots here, making your own plant labels, how to successfully start off broad beans. It's just wholesome goodness. My gosh, he is young in that picture. And then the final one I'm gonna look through here is from another great name, April Bloomfield. I'm so jealous of people <laughs> that have like really pretty cute names, like, I mean, Hazel Gardner, what a name she has got. How fabulous. There was a girl in my school called Rose Hedges. Let me know down below and don't make it up because I've heard so many like pretend, oh, I know someone with this name and it's not true. It, well, there must be someone out there with that name, but don't make anything up, but tell me in the comments down below either your name or someone's name who is just fabulous. What was, um, I think Charlie mentioned there was a rugby player that either he knew or someone that's on TV. And I think his surname is 12 Trees and his family are um, tree surgeons, but their surname is 12 Trees or something like that. And yeah, Hazel Gardner, even um, Adam Frost on Gardner's World. Like when your name aligns with what you do for work, I think it's fabulous. Carla Oates down there, um, yeah. Even like Tim Spector. How cool is that? Like you could be a superhero with the name Tim Spector. Whereas Fear and Irons, like obviously I love, I love my name, but um, it's not particularly on brand, is it? That's why I don't really ever use my surname. Anyway, that was a mega digression. This is this from lovely, lovelily named April Bloomfield. Oh, gorgeous name. Um, Ooh, there's some chard recipes in here, which is great, because I never know what to do with chard. Anyway, I'm digressing. I've chatted to you for five minutes, so I bet we've probably got some questions now on the Instagram story. So let's just quickly, I'll spend 10 minutes um, answering, <laughs> Charlie said, where's favorite, where's Dexter's favorite pub? Um, just answering a few quick Q and A's on the Cotswolds. Okay, what is the best way to get there from London and what to do there solo? Okay, so I do get asked this question a lot and I will preface this whole segment by saying um, a lot of the time when we answer these questions, it is for our guests because as you may know, Charlie and I have got a holiday rental cottage, straw top cottage, soon to be launching next door as well. It's a two bedroom cottage, um, amazing location for exploring the Cotswolds. And our cottage is a six minute drive from Banbury station. Banbury is a 54 minute train from London Marlebone. So you can literally get to the cottage from central London in under an hour. However, I would say once you get to the Cotswolds, you do really need a car because we're not in a city, we don't have really good public transport that will get you to exactly where you want to go and the places that you will want to visit are all at least 20 minutes from each other and you will have a lot more independence and a lot more freedom if you have got a car. So I would recommend either renting a car from London and driving down, it'll take you an hour and a half to get from central London to the Cotswolds on a moderate day and um, or you could get the train to Banbury, to Morton and Marsh or to, um, to be honest, I would recommend one of those two because they're bigger towns and there are car rentals there and then rent a car when you get here. Probably that is the cheaper option but if you've got a lot of stuff, you might wanna rent a car from London because yes, getting to and from pubs, I'm not gonna lie, the taxi situation around here, it's below average, it's, it's, we don't have Uber in the Cotswolds, tragically. There's Banbury cars, there's Castle cars, and I'm sure there are a few more taxi services. And they're fairly reliable, but it's just, I swear there's like mouse poo on the floor in that corner. I need to investigate that. Um, that's delightful. But yes, I would say cars are really gonna be a savior for you when you are in the Cotswolds. So 
did I even answer the question? <laughs> What's the best way to get there? The best way is by car. Renting a car so that you have that freedom and flexibility when you get here would be my top recommendation. How to get there from London airports. Again, I would get a car. What is, what's, what's a disadvantage to the Cotswolds? <laughs> I'm biased, um, but I literally think it's the best place in the whole world. The weather, maybe, we're still in England at the end of the day. Today it's grey and miserable, but at the same time, the Cotswolds is known for like cosy pubs and open fires and just get your wellies and your wax jacket on and go for a nice dog walk, it doesn't matter. Obviously the same with everywhere in the world, sunshine makes everything better, but the disadvantage I guess would be the weather. Right. Can you recommend things to do near your cottage apart from Dalesford? So our cottage is about 20 minutes drive from Bicester Village. It's about 15 minutes drive from Blenheim Palace and um, Woodstock. I goes without saying that both of those things are like a day in themselves. Bicester Village, obviously amazing discount designer outlet shopping. Um, Blenheim Palace, there is always stuff going on there and if it's a nice day the most beautiful walks they have like an autumn show they have fashion exhibitions there's also the rh restoration hardware at Ainho. that's six minutes away from our cottage that's fun for like half a day as you know we wouldn't necessarily recommend eating there um but for looking around and just enjoying it's six minutes away from the cottage which is amazing um there are so many beautiful walks that you can do. There are so many things to do in the Cotswolds, like so many farms you can go and visit. There's beautiful gardens. If you're a fan of National Trust properties, there are so many around here. There's Hidcote, there's Ch Trusselton, um, there's the place that we went to, what's it called, Compton Verney. So many beautiful National Trust properties. I mean, it depends on what you're into. There's so many foodie things that you can do, um, so many amazing walks, there are lakes that you can visit to swim in. There's so much. And often with, sorry, I've just decided to sit down a bit more cosily. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much to do and we provide lots of information in our guest book for ideas for things to do. Someone said, I've been to the lavender farm. Are there any more similar attractions that you would recommend? Um, well, it depends what time of year you come, obviously. But right now, if you come in the next couple of weeks, bluebell season, there are so many amazing, insanely beautiful woodlands like Oddington Woods full of bluebells. If you come in uh, like April, then we're getting into wild garlic season. And honestly, April and May, most of the Cotswolds does no mow May, so uh, the verges are not mown, so it's just full of wildflower. You, If you've rented a car and you just drive between villages, just drive around, you will just see fields and fields of flowers. <laughs> it's honestly so beautiful. There's also that place, um, what is it called? The Real Confetti Company, and they have got, I think it's Delphinium maybe not dolphiniums, I'm not sure, but they've got these insane uh, confetti fields and they are fields and fields and fields of beautiful coloured flowers and it's just stunning to visit, so yeah. Best season, a lot of people have said what is the best season? I love spring, so like May, April, May, June I would say is my favourite time, it's just really optimistic with the flowers starting to come out. June, I think, is normally the best month weather-wise for sunshine, and it just feels really, like, joyous and optimistic. Summer is great as well, great to get out of the city. Autumn is just, like, mega cosy, Sunday roast some fires. I don't like winter, um, but it's still a cosy place to come. Like, Charlie will say that this is the best time of year to visit, but I think the best is soon to come. Can we arrive there with a train from London? Yes, you can, but you will need a car to move around. The best places to stay, well, obviously it's Trolltop Cottage, um, but that aside, if it's fully booked when you're coming, then I do recommend anywhere basically within the Dalesford family. They are expensive. I think they are more expensive than Straw Top Cottage, but they are beautiful cottages. I think it's more affordable if you want to do like one or two nights to go to some of their, their pubs. So like the Bell, the Fox, the Bull is not a Dalesford one, but also has rooms. Um, Bull in Burford, and then obviously there's Time. 
if you've got a lot of money to play with then Estelle Manor although it's kind of in the middle of not nowhere but it's not in like the best location but it's an amazing place but it's pricey and then really soon and I'm so excited we're actually getting two the pig hotels one is Barnsley House is getting redone as a pig and one in Stratford which is really close to us it's gonna be like 10 minutes away which is amazing so the pig will soon be opening um, and that'll be a great place to stay Cots I don't know if this person means our cottages or the Cotswolds but it's said is a family friendly and dog friendly the whole of the Cotswolds is very family friendly and very dog friendly except for Soho farmhouse weirdly like not many you can't actually like go in with your dog to the main barn which will forever confuse me but all of the Dalesford places all the restaurants pubs you can take your dog it's absolutely fine family friendly yep again very family friendly our cottage we allow dogs and of course we allow children it does have a very narrow staircase though so for toddlers um I mean it depends on your toddler if they're a little bit wild then I would very carefully consider that um do people put toddlers on leads like I don't know can you like I don't, I don't know how you control your toddler if they're upstairs can they open doors I don't know I, I would I would consider it carefully if you have a toddler that runs around because yeah old cottages steep steps that is something to be aware of where to go to see the most beautiful places just the Cotswolds, <laughs> just the Cotswolds in general. Um, okay, no, being serious. So the best places, it depends what you classify as beautiful and it also depends on the weather. But for example, sunset. If you wanna see the most magical sunset, then you want to go to Edge Hill. So Edge Hill, I think the clue is in the name, but um, you literally feel like you're on Pride Rock looking over the Cotswolds Mass Aymara because you have such incredible vistas. The sunset from there is pure magic. Also around um, Charingworth Manor. Do you remember in Vlogmas when Lola and I pulled up with our fish and chips and we watched the sunset from Charingworth Manor? Um, that's also a really beautiful spot. But other amazing places, obviously Chipping Camden, Broadway, Stowe, Borton, all of these like proper trinket box, cute little villages. You want to check out those. Um, what is beautiful to you? Is it beautiful buildings? In which case visit the National Trust properties. What I find spectacular is literally just driving around and looking out of my wind, my, my wind, my windscreen. Um, because I just think that all the fields and all the views are so stunning. All around Dalesford, to be honest, not like the actual farm, but all around there, like towards Cornwell, the roads, you can see why it's called an AONB, Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty, but getting rebranded to National Landscape, I'm not sure how I feel about that, um, because it really is outstandingly beautiful naturally, and that's why it's called an AONB. Would love to do a pub walk. Any recommendations for a route? Firstly, I would recommend getting the app All Trails because then you can literally plot where you are and it will tell you all of these different um, routes that you can do. Let me have a look on my All Trails app and I can tell you some of my favorites. Okay, they've changed it <laughs> so that now I have to pay to see my saved routes. That's great. Okay, well, there's one that I remember. It's eight miles long, so nearly a four-hour loop, and it's the Ebrington and Ilmington Circular. Ebrington and Ilmington both have really good pubs, so you could start at a pub, have a pub halfway, and then get yourself back again. So the Ebrington Arms and in Ilmington there's the Howard Arms, so that would be a good one. There's also a really good walk, which is Evenlode, Adelstrop, and Churchill, and, and Oddington. So you can do that again, it's about four hours. It would be all day if you stopped at a pub. So for example, you could start with brunch at the Fox at Oddington, and then you could walk through Evenlode, through Adelstrop, um, and then get yourself to Churchill. You could have lunch at the Checkers at Churchill. And the views, I think you're walking through Cornwell as well, so that is just... That is like the most scenic route, I would say, because you get to see some really iconic Cotswold villages that aren't like the typical touristy ones that everyone visits because um, they're, they're not quite as famous. So you get a little bit more of an authentic taste of the Cotswolds. 
Um, and then near us, uh, to be honest, any of the National Trust properties like Broughton, Broughton Castle as well, they all have really good walks around them. So sometimes it's just a case of getting out your car and exploring. But I would definitely recommend the All Trails app. Around um, our holiday cottage in Adderbury, there's a really beautiful two hour long walk that takes you past the lakes. And it's really obvious when you're at the cottage, launch up your All Trails app and you'll be able to find it. We do leave little maps in the cottage as well and leave some recommendations. So there we go. Ooh, this one's, this person has said, if we relocate, what's the best area to move to? Which sounds crazy, but honestly, I would say that in Dalesford, which we often bump into you guys at Dalesford, not a surprise really. When I lived in London, it was always at Topshop, <laughs> but now it's always at Dalesford. Um, I've met at least, I would say, five or six people that have actually said that they've moved to the Cotswolds as a result of watching these videos, which is insane. But I'm not surprised at the same time. Anyway, I digress. So the best places, areas to stay and visit, and if we were to relocate the best area to move to, this is such a personal decision, I don't know anything about your life, but okay, let's say you want um, a little bit of hustle and bustle, but you want good amount of property for your money and you wanna be fairly accessible to London. I would personally, and this is what I always recommend to people, I would use either Banbury or Morton and Marsh as your two like um, priority places to put the pin in the middle there and then do like a little circle and look at the villages around those areas. If you really want to be walkable to a few different cafes and the hustle and bustle of town then I would recommend being closer to Morton and Marsh and um, there is a direct train from the middle of Morton gets you into London in like an hour and 20 minutes. If you were to live nearer to Banbury, although I wouldn't recommend living in Banbury so it's a bit more, it's a bit more of like a not a city, but it's a bit more kind of industrially. It's not got the charm of the Cotswolds, it's more, and actually it's not technically in the Cotswolds, but a lot of the villages to the never eat shredded wheat west of Banbury are in the Cotswolds, and that's that's where I personally would look. But Morton and Banbury, amazing links into London, and they are surrounded by beautiful villages. I'm not gonna name any of the villages because um, these are the places that Charlie and I are looking for new cottages as well, and um, I don't want to drive the demand up too much because that would be silly, but yeah. Basically, have a look west of Banbury at villages that are in the Cotswolds, like, okay, I'll say a few, um, Broughton, I would say like Tad Martin, um, obviously anywhere around like the Bartons, the Chews, Morton, Tottenham, I've said too much. Yeah, just look around all those kinds of areas. Obviously, Adderbury is gorgeous as well. Vegetarian places to eat, please. Uh, Quince and Clover, the Yurt at Nicholson's, basically all the pubs have got so many veggie options, so do not worry. <laughs> Someone's just said, I don't like the shorter YouTube videos. To be honest, nor do I. I much prefer putting out an hour long video and I much prefer watching longer videos. I just um, haven't been able to quite get them get quite that much in the videos at the moment, and that's because of a multitude of factors, one of which, quite a significant one of which, is that my wonderful Chloe has been away for the last two weeks. She's been on a mega holiday to um, Malaysia. She's actually coming back tomorrow. This video will have been edited by Chloe because she's back tomorrow, hallelujah. So the little like intro, the little teaser bit at the beginning of the vlog will be back. Um, and when she's back, I will, I will be able to be glued to my laptop less and I'll be able to film more. So don't you worry, the longer vlogs will be back and hopefully they'll be better now that Chloe's back too. Okay, um, and then someone's just asked for the best pubs. Okay, the best pubs. Oh my gosh, this is a big one. And I will try not to forget anything. I believe most, if not all of these, are in our blog post, which is basically our guide to the Cotswolds. I'll leave it on the screen here and link down below. But off the top of my head, in no particular order, food places that you must visit, if you're doing like a week, because there's a lot of them, um, we'll just try and tick as many of these off. That's my alarm telling me to publish a YouTube video. So I've got like one minute to ramble these off and then I'll sign out. Okay, obviously Quince and Clover, amazing for hearty soups, stews, salads, cakes, pastries, breakfast baps, um, ice cream, milkshake, coffee. 
The Yurt at Nicholson's is so under the radar still. It's amazing. The food quality is exceptional. The dishes are really seasonal, local, super creative, really fun atmosphere. It's in a yurt in a garden center. Not enough people know about it. And it's amazing. They do really cool like, um, themed nights as well. The Cotswold Guy, engaging well, um, I would recommend for lunch, for pizzas, for brunch as well, amazing cinnamon buns, amazing coffees. Pub-wise, my favourites are The Bull in Charlbury, The Bell in Charlbury, The Fox in Oddington, obviously The Wild Rabbit but it's a little bit more elevated, Checkers at Churchill, The Swan at Ascot under Witchwood, Bull in Burford, oh my gosh, The Black Horse in Salford, there are so many amazing pubs and then more elevated restaurants obviously time time is fabulous my camera is about to time out oh i do enjoy um getting like little snacks obviously at dalesford as well but i think that for like proper meals there are definitely better places that you can go but yeah there's so much okay i need to set tonight's video live which you guys will have seen a couple of days ago and i've now been rambling for this chit chat for 25 minutes so i think i'm gonna end the vlog here i've just set up my netflix to start watching manifest which is about an airplane that like takes off in april 2013 and lands in 2018 and the people on board had no idea that they'd been missing for five years it's wild i'm enjoying the first like little glimpse that i've seen on the netflix trailer so I'm gonna sit back and enjoy watching that while I um, do a little bit more admin. Okay, I need to get my video live. I'm gonna sign off, darlings. Thank you so much for watching today's vlog and is it half by the clock? I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. There's a little button down there you can press um, and subscribe if you are new to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.